Hello, welcome to V2C. In this short lecture, I'll incorporate the optimizations from V2B into the simplified Kyber public key encryption scheme from V2A. This will give us the full version of the Kyber public key encryption scheme as standardized by NIST in FIPS 203. For the sake of concreteness, it will help to keep the MLChem768 parameters in mind. These include the compression parameters DU, which is 10, and DV, which is 4. To generate an encryption decryption key pair, Alice does the following. Select a random 256-bit seed row and use the expand function to generate from row the k by k matrix A, whose entries are polynomials in RQ. Select random vectors of small polynomials S and E by selecting each coefficient according to the central binomial distribution. Then compute the vector T equals AS plus E. Alice's encryption key is comprised of rho and T. Her decryption key is S. To encrypt an n-bit plaintext M for Alice, Bob does the following. He first computes the matrix A from rho. He then randomly selects vectors R and E1 of small polynomials and a small polynomial E2. The coefficients of all polynomials are sampled from central binomial distributions. Bob computes U and V, and then compresses U to C1 and V to C2. The ciphertext is C, comprised of C1 and C2. To decrypt C, Alice uses her decryption key S as follows. First, decompress C1 to U primed and C2 to V primed. Alice then computes the polynomial V primed minus S transpose times U primed, rounds its coefficients, thus obtaining the message polynomial. As with the simplified Kyber PKE, there is a very small probability that decryption doesn't work. So when Alice decrypts the ciphertext C, there is a very small probability that she obtains a plaintext that is different from the one that was encrypted. In the full scheme, the compression and decompression increase the probability that decryption fails. But the error probability is still extremely small. Let EU be the error when decompressing C1 to U primed. So U primed, which is what is recovered during decryption, equals U, the vector of polynomials computed during encryption, plus the error vector EU. Similarly, let EV be the error when decompressing C2 to V primed. So V primed equals V plus EV. Now, during decryption, Alice computes V primed minus S transpose times U primed. I have made substitutions for V primed and U primed here. Expanding and simplifying, as was done on slide 53, gives this expression. Notice that the three inner products in the expression for the error polynomial are between vectors of small polynomials. Also, E2 and EV are small polynomials. Thus, one can hope that the error polynomial in decryption is sufficiently small, and consequently, decryption produces the correct plaintext. More precisely, the rounding yields the message polynomial, provided that the error polynomial E has infinity norm less than Q over 4. For the MLChem768 parameters, the absolute value of EI could in fact be greater than Q over 4. Hence, decryption is not guaranteed to succeed. 
Fortunately, though, it can be shown that the infinity norm of the error polynomial is indeed less than q over 4, with probability extremely close to 1. So in fact, decryption will almost certainly succeed. You can check that ciphertext compression doesn't affect the security of the Kyber public key encryption scheme. Hence, the security claim that was justified for the simplified version of the Kyber PKE also holds for the full scheme. So the Kyber PKE is indistinguishable against chosen plaintext attack, assuming that the decisional MLWE problem is intractable. I should emphasize that since Kyber PKE was only designed to be secure against passive attacks, i.e. chosen plaintext attacks, it should not be used as a standalone public key encryption scheme. Rather, Kyber PKE is only intended to be used as a building block of the Kyber Chem, which is the topic of the next lecture.